what we're going to be looking at here are intangible assets and they're going to be market related and those will be trademarks, trade names, internet, domain names and so forth here. And what we're going to be going over here is an example where we're going to have a limited life intangible asset and it's going to be internally generated. Now when we're dealing with intangible assets you really have two types here. One's with limited life here and others with indefinite life here or in the, where they go into perpetuity here. But and, and this is how we would deal with them. With the limited life here and an indefinite life we have uh, either we have purchased it. In this case we'd be capitalizing the amount here uh, in either case a limited life and indefinite life and then uh, for our internally generated or created uh, intangible here uh, you would be expensing it here either as a limited life or an indefinite life you'd be expensing it except for the direct costs which are capitalized and those would be attorney's fees, registration fees, design costs, consulting fees and successful legal defense cost of the intangible here. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is an internally generated um, intangible with limited life here and it's we're going to also be looking at the case here where, where we're going to be amortizing it here over the useful life. Now to point out here if it has an indefinite life we do not amortize it here. And then uh, thirdly we're going to be looking at impairment testing here if it's intangible. And uh, for the limited life you'd be doing a recoverability test and a fair value uh, test here. And for the indefinite life you'd only be using a fair value testing only here for impairment. So let's go and look at our example here. Uh, this is where Corpore applies for a trade name here early in 20X1 incurring legal costs here of $36,000. In early 20X2 it incurred another $15,600 here in legal fees and successful defense of this trade name here. Now normally when you're dealing with trade names they would just be capitalized here but um, we're going to be looking at the ca uh, capitalized here with an indefinite life here uh, with big companies and that but in our case it's going to be just a small company here and it's going to have a limited life here for this trade name. And for case one this is where we're just going to amortize the trade name over 10 years starting here in 20X1. We're going to look at that here and then case two or beginning in 20X2 it determines that the trade name will provide no future benefits beyond uh, the end of the year here in 20X5. So we're going to be looking at the case here where we have to revise the useful life here that we're amortizing. And then for case three, all we're going to be looking at and we'll be going over in pyramid testing here. So let's look at case one here where we capitalize and just amortize this uh, this intangible here which is our trade name here and what we do here again for capitalizing it uh, all we do is it would be involve here attorney's fees, registration fees, design costs, consulting fees and successful legal defense costs here. Those would be the typical ones that would be capitalizing here. Other costs were would be expensed as incurred here in developing this trade name. So let's just look at here what we would debit here as a, on our balance sheet as an asset here as an intangible asset. Uh, in this case we have thirty six thousand uh, dollars legal fees required here to um, file for this trade name here in 20X1. And then in year two here we come up with this these other legal costs here for successfully defending the uh, use here of this trade name. Somebody wanted to use it so we had to uh, come up with some uh, attorney's fees or legal fees here to defend it and that was for $15,600. So uh, for 20X2 here our total uh, am, uh, total capitalized amount was $51,600. The original $36,000 here in 20X1 and then we had to spend another $15,600 here in the second year here. So for 20X2 we've got this amount. Okay now what we do here with these um, uh, these intangible assets, we set up this amortization account and that's a contra account to our capital capitalized amount here and that would be for accumulated amortization for this trade name here again on our balance sheet here. So for let's let's go and calculate what our amortization would be here. So first for case one starting in our first year here at 20X1 the capitalized amount here we had was $36,000 and then it had a 10 year life so divide 10 years into 36,000 our amortized amount here for 20X1 is going to be $3,600. So at the end of the year here on uh, the first year to uh, end in December here, our book value or carrying value here on this uh, 
on this trade name here was $32,400 simply the capitalized amount less the amortization for the year here okay so just proceeding on here for year 20x2 or the next year here uh, to determine our amortization amount all we do is take the book value here of 20x1 that we had of 30 at the end of the year here at $32,400 but now we have to add in this legal cost that we had for defending this trade name here so we add that in here and our total capitalized amount is going to be to $32,400 uh, plus the $15,600 in legal costs for $48,000 so now we have nine years left here to amortize we uh, amortized the first year now we're going to have the uh, nine years left so we take the total amount here of $48,000 divided by nine years and for 20x2 the amortized amount here is going to be $5,333 so subtracting that here from our a total capitalized amount here in the beginning of the year 48,000 we're going to come up with a new book value here at the end of 20x2 here $42,667 so just moving back up here to our accumulated amortization account now this is like depreciation here but it's a amortiz we amortize these intangible assets here so uh, for 20x1 we would have credited it here for $3,600 20x2 uh, credit here for $5,300 uh, five thousand three hundred thirty three dollars and then we recognize that on our income statement here as an amortization expense here for this trade name here debit that here for those amounts here thirty six hundred for uh, 20x1 and fifty three hundred and thirty three dollars here for 20x2 okay so now let's go over here and look at the case here where we're gonna change the useful life here from ten years to four years here and we'll just go through that quickly here so for case two here for 20x1 we have the same capitalize amount here we go through those same numbers here and we come up with our book value at at the end of here at the at year at the end of year 20x1 of 32,400 we just carry that over here to 20x2 same as we did here for the first case here and then we have that legal cost here 15,600 so our total capitalized amount still remains here at $48,000 but now we revise the life here and remember here when our in our example we dis determined here that the trade name is going to provide no further benefits um, four years out here so we just take the $48,000 capitalized amount here uh, for that we have for 20x2 divided by four years in this case we're uh, going to four years here instead of what we would have normally had at nine years and you divide that into 48,000 so for 20x2 the amortized amount is going to be $12,000 so our remaining our book value here at the end of 20x2 is just simply the difference Our total capitalized amount 48,000 less the amortized amount for the year here of 12,000 gives us a book value here of $36,000 so we can just go up to our um, entries here for accumulated amortization here you can see a uh, 20x1 we had 3600 20x2 of 12,000 here and then we would have recognized as amortization expense expense here on our income statement for debited for those amounts here for each of the years here okay so now we're going to move on to case three here where we have some impairment testing Okay, now let's look at case three here, and we're going to be ignoring case two here. And it's determined that the beginning of 20x3, the fair value of the trade name here is $32,000, and the future cash flows from the trade name here are $34,000. So we're going to have an impairment here. But before we go in and make our calculations, let's look at the steps that we'd have to do. To to do here to determine whether there is an impairment. Number one, review events and changes. In this case, we have the fair value is less than the book value here, so we would have an impairment here. So number two, we'd perform a recoverability test. Now that's if the sum of the expected future cash flows undiscounted is less than the carrying amount of the asset, then you would have a failed test here. And um, this, again, future net cash flows are less than the carrying value, then you'd recognize an impairment loss. Now, there wouldn't be any impairment if the future uh, net cash flows were greater than the carrying value. Uh, but if the recoverability test indicates that an impairment has occurred, then a loss would be computed here. And then the impairment loss, that's simply in this case the carrying value less the fair value would equal the impairment loss. So let's go and look at our example here for our trade name. So our trade name cost we had at $51,600, and we had accumulated amortization here. Uh, through here uh, the first two years here of $8,933. So our book value, our carrying value here is 
seven dollars and the future net cash flows we had that at thirty four thousand dollars that was given to us and again we were given our fair value here at thirty two thousand dollars for this trade name okay let's look at our test here it failed the recoverability test the future net cash flows were less than the carrying value that was thirty four thousand here for the net uh, the cash flows less the carrying value here of forty two thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars so let's uh, look at how our we calculated our pyramid loss here book value of forty two thousand six sixty seven less the fair value here of thirty two thousand dollars gives us an impairment loss here of ten thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars and that we'd be recording here at the end here of 20 uh, X, uh, 20 at the end of the third year here, 20 X3 here. So let's go and look again at our calculation. So our loss on impairment, that's simply the book value here, less the fair value, that gives us our loss here of $10,667. Now this is where we come in and we have to establish a new carrying amount here on this uh, trade name here. And that uh, was its fair value here at $32,000. That becomes the new carrying amount. And then uh, we're give, uh, we know that we have eight years in this case of useful life remaining, so the amortization expense per year would be eight years divided into the new carrying amount here $32,000 its fair value gives us an amortization expense here of $4,000 per year and this is what we'd be looking here at 20x03 here uh, $4,000 per year so let's go down and look at our uh, our entries here again for our trade name we would have had 51,600 sitting here in our capitalized account for these legal costs so we would credit that out here remove that off the books here at $51,600 and then uh, we enter here our new carrying uh, value here of $32,000. That's its fair value here at 20x3 here. And then for our accumulated amortization account here for this uh, trade name here, again, we had this amount here, uh, total amount here of $8,933 sitting in it here um, through 20x2. So we would debit that out here, remove it off the books here. And uh, then we would take and ha have our new amortized amount here at $4,000 here for year 20X3 here. So our entries over here on our income statement, the impairment loss, that's simply uh, what we calculated up here at $10,667. And if you, uh, uh, our debits and credits all add up here. It is $10,667 debit here on our income statement for this loss here. Uh, along with the other debit amount here of $32,000 for the capitalized amount here of the trade name. And that balances with what we've, and with the, excuse me, and with the debit amount here of $8,933 here in our accumulated amortization account that we closed out here. That balances with our credit amount here of $51,600 here uh, on our capitalized amount here of a trade name. And then one last thing here, I amortized amount here for year 20X3, we would have added credit at that here for our accumulated amortization here of $4,000 for the year here, and then we would have debited our income state for amortized expense here of $4,000. So this is just how we uh, calculate this impairment loss. You can go through that and see how we do it. But in this case, with the impairment loss, we have to establish a new carrying value here uh, when we recognize that impairment loss we would have debited that here and then we would have closed out any existing amortization and carrying value here on our balance sheet and then we would have recognized the impairment loss here all right so that takes care of our impairment loss that we gone over here with this intangible asset same as uh, uh, tangible or uh, a capitalized amount here for just like a property plant equipment but this case we're using this amortization here on an intangible asset